Welcome back. The next case we are presenting is a 70-year-old male patient with a history of chronic pancreatitis. He presented clinically with abdominal pain. MRCP showed a stenosis in the um, pancreatic duct in the head of the pancreas and a dilated pancreatic duct in the body and tail. ESCP cannulation was attempted but failed. This MRCP image shows you the pancreatic duct with a stenosis of about two centimeter length. Professor Rush will now show you the EUS examination of the case. Hi, everybody back. Uh, this is a tough case. I spoke to the, to the man before I started and he said he has some very minor symptoms for about a year and it's almost a year where they, people think about his pancreas. So, you know, if somebody has pancreatic disease for a year, it's not so likely that he has cancer. But still, he has a dilated duct in, uh, up from the genu pancreatis and um, Somebody said he has calcifications on outside uh, EOS and CT and MR were inconclusive, th so there's still a tumor issue. And what we have done here is we have uh, done ERCP, and we could fill the pancreatic duct, the major duct, easily, which was very normal. And the contrast went into the minor duct, which was also normal, but then no further contrast, and no possibility to cannulate the distal duct with a guide wire. So we have two normal ducts in the head, Bertrand, and then a stop. And I did radial US, and the pancreatic head looked very inhomogeneous. I was not sure about calcifications and stones. And I think what's the message here is that if you have troubles with radial US, I think you can go to linear right away, maybe, uh, because it sometimes has a different aspect. So let's start with US. We are now in uh, the descending duodenum, and we have the big vessels here, the aorta and the cava. Bertrand is kind enough to show it. And I pull back and rotate the scope, and here is the pancreas coming into view, the uncinate process. So I pull back, we have the duct, the normal duct in the head. So Bertrand is checking whether it's not a vessel. No, it's not a vessel. We, we do the Doppler, so we follow the duct. The duct is here close to... You want to measure it? No. Yeah. Close to the, the duodenum, so that's the normal part we have been filling, that's the duodenum. We have been filling uh, by ERCP. So I withdraw the scope slowly. And let's see what that is. Here's the aorta on the left side. And maybe that's the bile duct. I'm not sure yet, mm -hmm. yes. But let's focus on the pancreas. So here we have the pancreas. There are some strands. Then here we have the duct, which l is, has a normal caliber, but uh, the wall is very thick. Would you agree or do you think it's normal, Bertrand? Yeah, a small thickening, very quick thickening. Yeah. So I slip back a little bit and, oh, here's the dilated duct, right? Mm. I rotate. Here. Here's the dilated Good duct. Point. Yes. Behind the this, this stricture and very clearly we see a stone. So when I did radial US or calcification at the duct and obstructing the duct. Six millimeters. Six millimeters stone. Aha. Uh -huh. Because I was not really able on conventional US, on radial US, to see the transition. Mm. But I think here we see it very nicely. So let me, so I think here is the dilated duct and here is the normal duct and here is the transition and there is at least, I'm not sure whether it's a classical intraductal stone or a calcification around the duct, maybe difficult to say but it's at it, I think it's a, a classic obstruction. Hmm. 
And so I think what's really the message is if you have troubles, if you are happy enough to have both scopes, then, and if you don't get along with the <laughs> radial, take the linear and might be vice versa. And there are people saying that the, the linear scope is the better scope for the pancreas. I'm not sure, but here it clearly was. Yeah, so we have... What, what do you think about the parenchyma? Hypoechoic. Do you think trans. we have a tumor suspicion there? No, I wouldn't say. It looks like homogeneous. Yeah, so it, it looks like an encasing calcification on both yes. sides. Huh? Mm. Yeah. So like the duct is here compressed, here's the, the duct proximal to the, to the obstruction, here's the dilated duct. I'm not sure where the, where the proximal duct, duct has is, yes, I agree. gone here. So it looks like chronic pancreatitis. I'm we initially we had planned to do a contrast uh, US. Maybe <coughs> since we have the stricture very nicely envisioned, maybe we do this, mm. right? In order to be sure that mm. there is a homogeneous distribution of the contrast. So can we switch? Okay. So now you can see on the left side the image we had before. A moment. And this, no, no. Yes, but wait. it's better to put it here. Wait, wait a second. So it's better to put it here to be direct. This is the image you know. Change the syringe. The cursor. Here with the calcifications in the duct. So that's the area we are interested in. And now we inject. It takes a little while. And we see <coughs> how the contrast the arrives in the vessels. And micro bubbles there. The micro bubbles. <coughs> and the question is here whether the vascular supply is homogeneous or whether an, an echo poor or a free area is left. No, I think you see a clear enhancement of all this area, yes. which is homogeneous. Yes. Without sp spare uh, areas. So. Uh, so we didn't have a, a, a tumor suspicion by linear. I was not sure with radial. So I think there's a, a further mosaic stone to say that malignancy is very unlikely, given also the other facts, one year history and so on and so on. Absolutely. So there is no need to puncture this area. I agree with that. Which we were considering. On the left side, you see exactly where I am. You see even the stones on the right side, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But there's no blood flow in a stone, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. So let's Th go. Thomas. On. Yes? Thomas. Yeah. Uh, you, you clearly demonstrated the reason of the obstruction by the stone, and also the, you uh, rule out the tumor, tumor by the contrast. As far what as we could. What shall you do? What shall you do next? Well, I mean, we had, we had two concerns. The main concern was that this might be a tumor, because then the entire That's treatment correct. is changed. If we are sure it's not a tumor, it's That's a stone correct. obstruction, which we now clearly are, then there's the question about the history of the patient, how much pain he has. And he told me before, in the last uh, three, four months, he hardly had any pain. Oh, elastography. This is um, sort of Van Gogh uh, pictures to EOS. And you evaluate the stiffness of the pancreatic tissue. And you get these nice colors. And um, Bertrand, are you an expert in this? I no, not expert. Uh, I only tested it at sometimes yeah. with this new uh, unit. You have never done this systematically. Initially, they thought that some colors were related to malignancy. So like blue is hard and... Um, but it turned out that uh, in further studies that this is not so easy. Mm. Sure. And the specificity, the sensitivity was limited and the specificity was low. So I think I like the contrast better. I do also. 
And uh, there is an advantage probably of this new center is that we can use the contrast with a lower mechanical index. Yes. 0 0.15, which is uh, lower than with the Alpha 10 unit and which probably uh, should enhance the uh, sensitivity for the micro bubbles. Mm -hmm. so we will have to test that also. I find it artistically very interesting, but <laughs> maybe clinically not. Okay. So I remove it. So, I mean, we are basically done. Here we see mm -hmm. a clear picture of chronic pancreatitis with, uh, here's the stone again, obstructing the duct. Yeah, which is there, I agree with you. But it's, it seems that it's, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's in the duct. As we can see, at least the upper one is a calcification outside, which seems to compress the duct. Mm. So that also has something to do with uh, ESWL will be successful which I doubt. Plus we have a question from the audience. Yes. Uh, in this particular case, do you consider transgastric EUS-guided pancreatography? I have not got the, the entire question, question but I think it, it was about EUS pancreatography. I am not sure whether we need That's it. That's correct. I don't think we need it because we know how the pancreatic duct looks like from MRCP and here from EOS very well. <laughs> we know how it looks like um, up to the stone from <coughs> ERCP. We could use this access if we really insisted on draining this. And this depends on the clinical history. So if the patient has severe pain or attacks of pancreatitis, then this would be a way of puncturing and trying to um, get a guide wire through from the other side because we failed via ERCP. Um, but if he is rather asymptomatic, we would not do this. And as you know, there are two ways. You could try to do a rendezvous. You puncture and try to get the guide wire through. Or if it's really, and that's I think rarely indicated, you can drain the pancreatic duct into the stomach, which is technically challenging and as a clinical concept um, of, in my opinion, of moderate attractiveness. The whole concept of draining the duct in chronic pancreatitis has been doubted by randomized studies and is still heavily debated. But. Um, here, since he hasn't had symptoms over the last month, I would be reluctant to really be aggressive. Sure. But you are right, this would be the way if we tried a rendezvous. Good. Can you look to the body, perhaps? Yeah, so we will look at the body further. I'm still in the bulb. And we see that the parenchyma is atrophic. You see the vascular landmarks. People doing abdominal ultrasound are familiar to the AMS, Arteria Mesenterica Superior, and the confluence with uh, the, the portal vein and on the left side and the splenic vein on the right side. But this is behind the stone. So here's the stone and there's a homogeneous dilatation of I think 3-4 millimeters. And I'm now back in the stomach. Must, uh, can you point out some of the features, maybe the more subtle features of chronic pancreatitis here, some of the lobulation and ductal changes? Okay, so maybe we save the image. So we have um, <coughs> the ductal ball is thickened and we have these echo ridge strands which are not so nicely seen here I think, but um, here we have the lobulation and have you have a lot of echo rich strands in between. So he clearly has chronic pancreatitis. If you see these features alone and, the, uh, and they are subtle and the pancreas is, is not atrophic as here, it's kind of difficult to really confirm whether this is cr chronic pancreatitis. So I'm now back in the, in the stomach. Here we have the adrenal gland. Aorta. Kidney. Maybe we go a little bit back. 
And here we look for the pancreas. The pancreas is easy to find because it's distinct from the surrounding. Often, you, if you have surrounding tissue and the pancreas, so this <coughs> is not the pancreas, but this is the pancreas because we know it, uh, its echo pattern. Or maybe I'm wrong on its bowel, huh? Let's see. So we go in a little bit. So here we have bowel. Mm -hmm. bowel. Bowel, bowel, bowel. Pancreas. That's pancreas, yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, with calcifications yeah, and everything. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not sure. I think that's. Frankly mm. speaking, no, that's no, pancreas with a pancreatic duct. Yes. Yes, now I'm sure because I was not sure mm. whether it was bowel or not. But that's a pancreas. It's in a transverse section, and if I rotate the scope, you can follow it better. But there are, there are new, no new aspects, and uh, I think there's also time to switch to the next room.